What is up, investors? Back again with another stock analysis, this time Uber. Last year, I posted a video where I talked about why Uber and Lyft stock have crashed since their IPO, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. But hey, look, everything's got a price, and the more this stock goes down, the more I kind of like it. Although we've seen here this stock IPO'd uh, last year at that $41 range. It dipped all the way down to about $25, $26, has had a nice little rise right before we had COVID-19. Huge COVID-19 impact, obviously, on this stock. They operate, I think, about 25% of their business is major cities like Chicago, New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco. And so, obviously, those cities have, I mean, as most cities are, have been on shutdown. So, a huge part of this company's revenue has been under flux. However, this company does have Uber Eats and some other ways to make money, even as kind of maybe ride sharing and stuff like that has not been going as planned. Now, this stock has been making a nice rise since we made like a low here at $21, call it the coronavirus low. Now, also what's going on with this company is they're in talks with possibly buying Grubhub. And what I believe is that announcement didn't come until May. However, I believe insiders and employees and stuff like that probably knew well before we did as the public. So I want to say some of this move is probably already pricing in an acquisition of Grubhub. And so you might be thinking, well, I'm going to buy Uber and it's going to have this massive update when they announce the, the you know purchase of Grubhub. Well, some of that news might be priced in. Okay. It might be one of those things where it's like buy the rumor, sell the news type thing. Whether or not that materializes, I don't know. That's also not exactly why I would want to buy Uber. Although a combination with Grubhub, I think would be very beneficial to shareholders. So here's the stock price. It's a little bit of a roller coaster, but it's starting to level. You know, we're seeing when it makes these highs, it levels off. And without COVID-19, we might have seen kind of a level off here close to the IPO price. So it's not that bad. Obviously, if you got back here in the $26 range or down here in the $21 range, you're probably feeling pretty good. And I certainly uh, kind of wish I had maybe had taken a bite of this apple at that time. First thing we're going to look at, though, is year over year. So I pulled up the most recent annual report, which has 2015 all the way through 2019 revenues and profits, which there aren't any uh, with this company. But we see the growth trajectory of this company, and this is well before it went public. It didn't go public until 2019. So the growth trajectory was really nice early in 2015, although not as quickly as you'd kind of expect with Uber. And then finally, revenue again, really nice acceleration here from 16 to 17 and 17 to 18 we start to see this kind of level actually it started leveling off here this is about four billion dollars this is about four billion dollars a little less than that and again this is a little less than four billion dollars so this company is actually it's growing but it's actually pretty steady growth we've analyzed some other companies in the past where the the growth is a little more exponential maybe like uh, beyond meat kind of comes to mind and some other companies that we've analyzed. The the growth here is a little more steady. Now, if that growth continues, if this, you know, you bolt on another four billion and then you keep doing that for the next five or six years, we're sitting here at a sixty-two billion dollars. That's what the B valuation right now. Okay, maybe they grow into that evaluation because fourteen billion dollars, I mean, what are you paying? Like you know, close to five times. Uh, actually, a little more than five times revenue, just revenue. You're paying five times revenue for a company like this. So, um, you know, a little rich valuation. Also, you got to factor in the expenses. So here's total costs and expenses. Notice these are scaling up almost at a rate that's greater. Actually, it is greater in most cases than how revenue is trending up. So you'd like to see a reversal there at some point where these expenses level off or they eventually start to generate even more revenue growth than the company has seen. We see our loss from operations here expand. There was a little bit of a hesitation here where it looked like maybe the company was turning the corner, but they did massive investment here in between 20, 2018 and 2019, where they invested huge amounts of money into the business. Now, again, that might turn out to be a great investment for shareholders, but it may not. So lastly, take a look at the shares outstanding here. We see here, you know, going from a private company to a public company that shares outstanding uh, really accelerated. And the other thing I want to make note of is the Grubhub acquisition is being talked about as an all share deal. So Uber is going to actually issue shares 
in exchange for Grubhub. And so you get diluted even further if that deal goes through. Another reason why I think some of that deal is already being priced in. Although we most stocks we're seeing are making a nice bounce off the March lows. And as you know, cities are opening up, things are getting slightly back to normal for Uber and other companies after the coronavirus. So we'll see what happens. But okay, so that was the annual report. We're seeing, again, not as explosive growth as I'd like to see. And then obviously no no earnings to even, you know, come close to, they made some money in 18, I think in preparation to become public. So this company was, tr- was thinking of becoming public in 2018, or they wanted to show a full year where they made a little bit of money here. And then in 2019, they just threw it all out the door and lost the most money uh, that they probably ever have as a company. So burned through a lot of cash in 2019. Now we want to take a look. What is 20? 20- 20 look like now that we're into 2020. Now, here's a couple things that I want to show you. So this is a press release by Uber, their most recent things. So what they lead off are these gross bookings. And so what you can learn in this video and maybe, uh, you know, as you become a really good investor is don't always just take what the company wants to give you. Okay, this is like near the top of the press release are these gross bookings. And then I'll show you what actually matters, like revenue uh, later on. So gross bookings is basically, so when you take an Uber ride, you know, you get the money, you know, you pay the driver and or you pay through the app, the driver gets a little bit of money, Uber gets a little bit of money. Same with Uber Eats. The driver gets a little bit of money, the restaurant gets a little bit of money, Uber gets a little bit of money. So what Uber does is they just calculate all the money that they get. And so that's what this gross bookings number is. I don't honestly know how useful this is for you as an investor to know that this number includes what goes to the driver, what goes to maybe an insurance company. I don't think it really matters. What really matters is this revenue. And you'll see the delta between, you know, here's revenue on rides. Here's what they took in. Here's revenue on Uber Eats. Here's what they took in. Obviously, they take in a lot of money because some of this is the price of food factored in. So, uh, you know, I don't know why they break it out like this. Maybe there's a reason. I don't know. I don't really care, though. So I just wanted to point that out that, you know, companies are going to show you figures that they want you to look at. I want you to focus on what matters, and that is revenue. That is money that actually flows down into the financial statements of Uber. So here we go. Most recent quarter, again, we had a lot of COVID-19 impact here, especially around the world and especially the last, maybe call it two to three weeks here in the United States. We saw a major shutdown, especially in the cities that Uber operates. So revenue actually ticked up nicely. If we annualize this, if we times this by four, how close do we come to this number? Pretty much dead on. So there, I actually believe that Uber is probably going to exit the year I mean, we can factor in Uber Eats probably has accelerated a little bit, but I think from a revenue basis, I don't think they're going to grow this company much more than where they were at in 2019. So that's a little problematic for me, you know, wanting to jump in there and buy some shares. So we're seeing revenue tick up again nicely, but not a rapid acceleration like we've seen in some other business that we've analyzed. So cost of revenue here quite high, but not super high. Um, And it looks like it's scaling up nicely. So, um, you know, this cost of revenue, I'm sure I I have a feeling is probably included like the driver fees and stuff. So drivers aren't necessarily making any more money than or very much more money than they did last year. It is kind of a commodity business, kind of a side hustle for most people. Now, these other costs are, you know, look at general administration, almost doubled. Research and development, you probably want them to invest in here. Sales and marketing went down a little bit. Maybe they offered, uh, you know, less promotions and stuff to get people to drive or buy from Uber Eats. But total cost and expenses actually was relatively in check. Okay, this is a 700 million increase, although we only had about, call it maybe a $500 million increase on the top line. So again, still going in the wrong direction. Loss from operations went from one point, about a billion dollars up to about $1.3 billion. So again, still moving in the wrong direction. Um, You know, again, you're not necessarily investing in Uber Uber to churn out a profit, but you'd like to see a pathway there. And I'm still not necessarily, because this top line is not growing super rapidly, 
I don't see this loss from operations really turning around rapidly as well. So finally, moving down a little bit, here's some things I want to show you. So this company lost more from a, a net loss here. So they went from a billion dollars net loss to close to 3 billion net loss. So you'd actually expect, this is why we don't look at earnings per share. At least I don't when it comes to this type of analysis. So notice that earnings per share actually went down. So it actually looks like they earned more, which they did per share. But again, you got to remember the denominator went up rapidly. So they went from 453 million shares outstanding to 1.7 billion. So while they lost money, earnings earnings per share actually uh, improved a little bit. So that's why you you don't want to just focus on the headline earnings per share. You want to dig into the financials and actually see what's happened with Uber. And in this case, losses actually accelerated for the quarter. And let's see where they were on an annual basis. So they lost $8.5 billion last year. And if you average this out, they're actually looking to burn through even more cash in the coming year. So that's a problem. Now, let's take a look at the balance sheet to see if they can handle it. Again, I anticipate this company repeating this number again. They're probably going to lose I would guess between eight and nine billion dollars based on the first quarter, and especially because they haven't even printed a lot of the COVID 19 impact on the business. Cash and cash equivalents, we see like a year end view to a current quarter view. And they burn through about $2 billion in cash. They have about $8 billion left. But again, this is about what they're on pace to burn through for the rest of the year. So, or call it another $6 billion. So this company is going to start coming a little bit under pressure from a cash perspective. So that's not... I wouldn't say that's a great thing. So I think this is a company that uh, is probably going to have to raise some money. We do have some long-term debt here. We see it's about steady uh, year over year, or at least, excuse me, quarter over quarter, essentially. And so, you know, total liabilities ticked up about a billion. Assets went down about a billion. And, you know, to be quite honest, this company is no pun intended, uh, stuck in neutral a little bit. While these revenues are growing and we see that they did grow in the quarter, this company is kind of stuck in neutral just a little bit. And I do see, you know, things are improving. We see here in the United States, Latin America, uh, Europe in the Middle East and Asia Pacific, we're seeing that they are growing ridership here. Uh, across the board. However, it is not necessarily translating into exponentially more revenue for the company. So again, taking a look back at the stock chart, this stock has made a nice little run back from its March kind of COVID-19 lows. Uh, some of this I think is Grubhub related and I'd like to see that story play out. See what happens. See how much they have to quote unquote pay because they are going to pay with Uber shares. So do I really want to jump in there and buy Uber shares knowing that I'm going to get dil possibly diluted quite a bit as they issue more shares? possibly to raise funding uh, because the balance sheet I think is going to come under pressure as we reach the end of the year. And also, if they make an acquisition, you're certainly going to see some cost pick up as well if they do, in fact, acquire Grubhub. So for me, I would be on the sidelines with Uber. I know you probably wish and I could pick a top or a bottom here. I think if you got in near these lows in, say, the low 20s, I have no problem holding this stock. I, I got, and even if you're out here in the IPO price in the 40s, if you paid a little bit more than $35, I wouldn't be, you know, totally alarmed and, and totally worried about my shares. I'm just speaking from a perspective of acquiring a brand new position in Uber. I certainly wouldn't be aggressive in starting a new position because this is a company, if the deal doesn't go through with Grubhub, what happens to the share price? Because I believe believe some of this move is pricing in that deal and you have insiders and maybe employees and, and just, you know, you have insider trading essentially, which I know is illegal. But in this case, I do believe insiders have acquired shares in anticipation of maybe selling the news when that deal potentially goes through. So this is absolutely a watch list stock. I'd like to see how these revenue numbers 
you know, I want to see what happens to this company in the next quarter when we really see the bulk of COVID-19. This is only the bulk of their business is here in the United States. And so what happened, what happened when New York was shut down and San Francisco and LA and their big markets were shut down? Did, did it really, really kill revenue? And I know if it doesn't, you know, you might miss a little bit of a move in the stock, but I think you're going to see a lid on the stock close to this IPO price. There's probably enough people that have shares here that would have, you know, would have some selling pressure if this stock uh, does start reaching these highs. So I would be patient with Uber, add it to your watch list and, and watch what happens. If it acquires Grubhub, see what happens. I think that would be a huge positive for their business model. I don't know how big of a positive it would be for the stock only because they're going to have to issue a lot of shares in order to acquire a company like Grubhub. So I'd be on the sidelines waiting for this one, waiting for the price action to maybe level out. But again, if you got in at some of these lower prices here over the last year or so, I think you should pat yourself on the back. I think you got a fair deal and uh, you watch where this one goes. I think still at a $62 billion valuation and at a, you know, we're talking barely a run rate of this company at 15, barely $15 billion and no profits to speak of. I still think you're paying a hefty, hefty price for a company that's still, still trying to prove itself in terms of its growth and its profits going forward. So there we go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. If there is a company you would like me to cover here on the channel, I would be happy to leave me a comment below. I've got a nice list and we'll be getting to them over this week, but leave me a comment below if you agree or disagree with how I analyzed Uber today. If you like what we're doing on here on the channel, consider subscribing and maybe hit that that like button for me as well. We'll see you again. Good luck with your investments.